the Utah volcanoes, which are south of Yellowstone Supervolcano. And we're going to look at the Black Rock Desert volcanic field, according to what USGS is telling us. But uh, according to Volcano Discovery, we have eight Utah volcanoes south of Salt Lake and Provo, Lake Salt Lake and Provo Lake. And they are the Bald Knoll Volcano, the Black Rock Desert, which we're going to talk about, the Fumarole Butte, the Kolob, the Mark Gunt Plateau, Mineral Mountains, Cofort, and Santa Clara, and Smelter Knolls. Bald Knoll is the youngest of a group of basalt cinder cones, southwest part of the Pansacant Plateau in southern Utah. The Black Rock Desert Volcanic Field is a group of small volcanoes, a volcanic field in south-central Utah at the eastern margin of the Great Basin, and it's the youngest volcanic area in Utah, containing both Utah's youngest known rhyolite dome, uh, which uh, was formed about 400,000 uh, 400, years ago, with the youngest lava flow. Now, according to uh, USGS, the Black Rock Desert Volcano. The volcanic field is located west central Utah between the towns of Cofort and Delta. It's the northernmost volcanic field in a belt of young volcanic fields beginning in the northern Grand Canyon of Arizona, continuing in a north trending line through Utah and part of the eastern basin and range province. The Black Rock Desert Volcanic Field covers nearly 2,700 square miles and it's 90 miles long. Black Rock Desert has been active for over 6 million years, but has only been continuously active since 2.7 million years. The first eruptions occurred in the north, forming the Topaz Mountain Rhyolite Lava Domes and North Butte Basalt Flow from around 6.1 million years ago. The latest eruption took place in the central portion of the volcanic field only 720 years ago, and form the basalt cinder cones and flows of ice springs. Black Rock Desert is distinct from most other young volcanic fields in Utah in that it contains not only basalt and andesite, but also dacite and rhyolite. Eruptions are dominantly monogenetic, but some are more complex. Black Rock Desert is host to a variety of volcano types, including cinder cones, shield volcanoes, lava domes, and Mars, explosion craters. Mars is a low relief, broad volcanic crater formed by shallow explosive eruptions. The explosions are usually caused by the heating and boiling of underground water, under, under, uh, groundwater when magma invades the groundwater table. Mars often fill with water to form a lake. So they have these things too, and also a caldera, a large basin-shaped volcanic depression with a diameter many times larger that included volcanic vents and may range from 2 to 50 kilometers or from 1 to 30 miles across. There's also lava tubes preserved in some of the younger volcanoes there. The Black Rock Desert Volcanic Field is host to two other interesting features unrelated to volcanism. The presence of ubiquitous petroglyphs and the presence of shorelines engraved in the rocks, which are from the ancient Lake Bonneville. Lake Bonneville, present in Black Rock Desert, formed around 22,000 to 12,000 years ago and is related to the Pleistocene Ice Ages. The Pleistocene is the first epoch of quaternary period, the most recent geologic time period that lasted from 2.5 million years ago to 11,700 uh, 11, years ago, spanning the world's recent period of repeated glaciations and is the period of time before the Holocene. Erosional processes from shoreline action and deposits from the ancient lake remove or hide evidence of volcanic vents deposits such as cinder cones. The vents are any opening at the Earth's surface through which magma erupts and volcanic gases are emitted. Now, but for all but the youngest eruptions, petroglyphs are commonly found near Old Lake Bonneville shoreline on boulders of basalt. For the... Uh, Black Rock Desert field, and this is, for example, one of the pictures, the desert image. And uh, this is a Lake Provo. Let's pull out a little bit so you can see the area. Okay. 
oops, sorry. Okay, there we are. Salt Lake City and uh, Provo was, uh, where is it? It'll come here. We got it did it away. Okay, there it is. Lake Provo is just around here. And uh, pulling out again. Okay, Idaho. And this is where we have Yellowstone Supervolcano, Idaho, Utah. And we do have um, Nevada, a volcanic field as well. We'll go into that later. And um, the earthquakes, the sorry, the uh, volcanic field here showing where they are exactly. Lake Provo, Salt Lake. And these are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 volcanoes. You can see that they're basically on the line of the mantle plume that goes from Baja through Utah and straight into Yellowstone this way. That's a cross section that we saw in the map previously. And that magma, of course, pools around here very close to the surface as it reaches the Yellowstone area. If you're standing on uh, around Yellowstone Lake, it's basically three miles under the surface is the top of the um, chamber, the uh, roof of the chamber, from what they're telling us, anywhere from three to five miles down, right there. So this is the area of the Black Rock. Let's go here. We'll see a little bit more of that. Black Rock Desert Volcanic, volcanic Field, group of small volcanic fields in south central Utah at the eastern margin of the Great Basin. It's the youngest volcanic area in Utah and contains both Utah's youngest known rhyolite dome about 400,000 years ago and its youngest lava flows, uh, the roughly 660 year old Ice Springs lava flows located at Ice Springs 15 kilometers west of Meadow. The lava flows extend four kilometers northwest from Black Rock Station consists of basalt lava flows capping a small plateau of the town of Deseret and the Paval, Pavant volcanic field, Kanosh volcanic field, Tabernacle volcanic field, Ice Springs where we had the 660-year-old um, lava flow is the youngest of the fields as they say containing about uh, located about 15 kilometers west of Meadow covering an area of 20 kilometers square kilometers and it contains three large Several small craters, Crescent Crater, 500 meters, that's about 1,500 feet in diameter. Miter Crater, that's about 300 meters, about 1,500 feet. And the collapsed cone of Terrace Crater, it's about uh, 9,000, 1,000 feet. Cove Fort Volcanic Field, again, you can see Cove Fort Crater, reddish cinder cone, about one kilometer diameter. A basalt lava flow extends 20 kilometers southwest of the crater. Going back to our shake map of the 6.5 that we had in Idaho, a shake intensity, as you can see here, this is Yellowstone right here, the Yellowstone Lake, and this is Hebgen Lake. And um, taking them off a little bit now so we can see the lava flow. There it is. Isn't that beautiful? there. It's so clean that you could, you could see it from, from, okay, there it is. That's a lake over here. It's amazing. 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 There you go. That's a huge lava flow, isn't it? Okay, so I'll leave links below for you for this is from USGS and Volcano Discovery. Thank you for your support. And if you'd like, you could support me on my Patreon account too. Thank you so much. God bless you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever 
I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.